What's up, everybody? Thank you for coming out to our panel this year here at PAX East. Uh, it's going to be very fun, I promise you. Uh, a couple housekeeping notes before I introduce our panel to us, uh, to you guys. There's a meet and greet tonight. Hopefully you all know about this. It takes place at 10 p.m. tonight at a venue called Royale, as in Royale with cheese. 279 Tremont Street. Uh, hopefully you guys can all make it out there. It is 21 and over, just a heads up. Cause we're <laughs> that, guy, that guy's a big fan of 21 and over. Because there's going to be some dranks. Uh, everybody, I'm Damon Hatfield from IGN. Woo! Up here, up here to my left is Marty Sleva. Hi, Damon. This is Alana Pierce. Hi. Ooh, Pierce. Explosive. This is Andrew Goldfarb. Hi. I bet the other people in the room probably can't see you. I'm very short, so I'm, I'm the podium. <laughs> Did you, did you say I'm the pony? Yes, I said I'm the pony. Aww. Ride the pony. <laughs> this is Ryan McCaffrey. <laughs> and Max Scoville. Oh, people really like Max. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to be talking about big uh, video game anniversaries that are happening this year. The, as a full disclosure, I know that the title said 16 big anniversaries happening this year. We're actually going to talk a, a lot more than that, uh, but 16 makes for a sexy headline in 2016. What if a bunch of people stood up and walked out? I know. Yeah. That's a great start. I was told there would be 16 <laughs> anniversaries. It's the pre-order DLC. No they more, no less. The panel, yeah. And so now they're getting more. So we'll start with the, the uh, smaller anniversaries. Your five years, your 10 years. And we're going to work our way up to uh, 40 years. There's one game that's celebrating its 40 year, 40th anniversary this year. Uh, and we are going to save some time at the end for uh, some Q&A. If you guys have any questions, we'll try to save 15, 20 <laughs> minutes at the end for that. Uh, but let's go ahead and kick this all, this whole sordid affair off. Celebrating its five-year anniversary the, this year is the Nintendo 3DS. This guy. I want to street pass with you all. But you better have some puzzle pieces. I get really mad when you're like, no new puzzle pieces. Get the left out of here. Uh, what do you guys think about the 3DS? It's weird because the very first thing I did for IGN was the 3DS launch in March of 2011. I met uh, Rich and Jack when I was a freelancer for IGN at the 3DS launch. So that's a weird anniversary for me as well. Aww. <laughs> Is this your five-year anniversary at uh, IGN? Well, well, not not counting I, your I left. Away. I took a sabbatical for, uh, for 14 months. Uh, yeah, it, it will be at the end of the year. Yeah. And Marty too, right? Yeah. Oh, well, or next month's my five year. And I never left, like, unlike you. Like, oh, like a <laughs> <traitor. laughs> pre order Battleborn coming out sometime next month. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, the 3DS is rad. Uh, I kind of, when they first announced it, I was mad because Nintendo does a thing where they just, like, repeatedly release new versions of their handheld consoles yeah. for a really long time and the stuff that only worked on 3DS. But it was, like, one of the first times I'd ever played a video game in 3D was on the 3DS, and it actually does a really good job of it. Also, it's like... Great games. It's super great games. Like, the launch wasn't good at all, but, like, over the course of its lifetime, obviously, it has an amazing library. But it was also that magic technology of the glasses-free 3D. Yeah. And I still mm -hmm. don't 100% understand how it works, but it does, which is really cool. Science. It's I think I'm the physics. only one that still ha keeps the 3D slider on on my 3DS. I like the 3D. Yeah? It's I'm a lot that, better I'm than the new one, too. What a weirdo. What about, a, <laughs> what about our audience? 3D slider on or off? Those words that sound was, very that was similar when you yell them. Uh, Off and on sound the same when shouted by a mob. <laughs> what, I, what I love is that, like, I remember when that was coming out, like, I was just getting my start in, in games, and it was sort of like VR in that people didn't know if it worked or not. Mm. Like, it was kind of like, you know, you got you to see it. You got you to try it out for yourself. You gotta, it, it totally works, but, like, you know, go to Best Buy in, in six months. <laughs> I so think with the 3DS, I mean, you couldn't get pink eye. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was too soon. You mentioned street passing, but it's like that was one of the coolest things to launch for me. Was, was like, oh, there's a like because Ocarina of Time didn't come out until three months after, but um, there's that mini game, there's Find Me, and all these things that it was mm -hmm. like so immediately fun to like have like a immediately. Weird RPG. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't. All right. <laughs> <laughs> A video game that's celebrating its fifth anniversary this year. And as we go along in this panel, like, we're all going to uh, start to feel older and older. Like uh, with Portal 2. Excellent. He's already five years old. 
No, no, shut it down. Hold on, hold on. Time out, time out. I remember that day. That was, that was not just Portal 2, that was, that was Portal Combat Day. Those two games came out at the same day. It was mm. great. Yeah, the PS oh, yeah. Yeah. oh God. That was the entirety of 2011. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's yep. the last big uh, console game that Valve released. Oh, that's so yeah. sad. Actually, um, oh, God, Mitch Dyer, before he died, <laughs> left IGN. <laughs> Uh, we were talking about like what game we would constitute as actually being a perfect game, and yeah. uh, the only conclusion that we could come to was Portal. Like, it might actually be perfect. Portal yeah. 2 was an, also an awesome game. The only thing that I wish was different was that it was longer. Yeah, it was funny, too, because it was one of those things where like after Portal 1, I never felt like I needed anything else. Like, why possibly yeah. iterate on this? Why possibly do anything else? And then you get this, and you get the different colored puzzles, and you get the Cave Johnson stuff, and you're like, it's oh, my God, this funny. is so incredible. Yeah, incredible. Yeah, and, like, the world-building stuff is really interesting, too, because, like, like, the mechanics in Portal 1 were awesome, but, like, Cave Johnson and, like, making Aperture Science feel like a more of a, a broad, like, world was really cool. Yeah, and that's still, like, it's because of this game that people are still craving Valve to go back and yeah. make something that isn't Dota. Yeah, I'm a sure. big fan of co-op games, and Portal 2 has probably one of the greatest co-op modes of all yeah. time. Oh, yeah, yeah. and it was also cool. replayable. Like, even, even if you, you played through it, you'd forget how yeah. you solved everything, so you can replay through those levels, and there was a lot of them. I'm so glad it had co-op. Also, such a good speedrun game. Speedruns of Portal mm. are just amazing. And a great final boss fight. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. All right. Ten-year anniversaries, Max. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Kick it Max is 10? <laughs> Let's get old. Dude, happy birthday. <laughs> Let's get old and weird. Uh, well, what about uh, the PlayStation 3? Is that old and weird? Spider-Man 3 was a great years. film, and PlayStation 3 was a great console. Okay, one of those things is a lot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, my, my first uh, E3, covering E3 for IGN, was uh, when they announced... Uh, 599 US dollars. Yeah, $600. I'll not, it's just one of those moments I'll never forget, I think... And yeah, Bridge, Bridge Racer. Racer. Was that Giant Enemy Crab as well? Giant Enemy Crab. Historically crabs, accurate. Yeah. It was just Enemy one of the greatest uh, E3 press conferences yeah. of all time. Yeah, that's funny because, I mean, it's, no one's going to argue the PS3 had such an awful launch and such like an awful like, road to launch that eventually, obviously, Sony turned it around with incredible games and then by the PS4, that was just a Wasn't distant memory. was it really memory. expensive on launch as well? It was, it was $500 or $600. So in Australia, it was like $7,000 in Australia. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it was roughly uh, yeah. a million. And but they said the thing about getting a second job to be able to afford it. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, I totally forgot about that. Yeah, what an awful joked. statement to make. <laughs> Wait, what? They joked that people would get a second job to afford a PlayStation 3. Yeah, but like Hilarious. Sony said it. Yeah. <laughs> John I mean, Sony I was himself. 12. <laughs> Why didn't you get a first job? I, no, I did. That's terrible. Fine. I got one. Well, yeah. uh, of course, that was also the same year that Nintendo launched the Wii. Oh. Hey, come on. Oh. I waited in line for one. Yeah? I waited in line for one. Yeah, I mean, you boo it like everyone in this room didn't have it. Like, obviously, we all had this, which is incredible. And this was the exact opposite in terms of what Sony was doing. And obviously, again, in the long run, you know, the, the PS3 turned out to probably be a better console in its life than the Wii, but the idea that this thing came out cheap, it came out marketing to everyone, and it came out impossible to find that fall. The yep. amount of people yeah. who've played Wii Sports, like yeah. I, I would guess most people in this room have played Wii Sports, totally. which is something that I don't think you could confidently say for most PS3 Anything. launch games. Yeah. Like, that's crazy. Yeah, like my mom bought a Wii. Like, she went to a store Same. and bought a video game console. That, yeah. Andrew, yeah. what's this Wii device that you <laughs> children are playing? I think you can go bowling on it, right? Is that Ryan? I can't see. I feel like that's Ryan. No, that's Andrew's mom. <laughs> no, Andrew's mom. <laughs> Andrew's <is> mom? <laughs> she popped on stage right next to Max. Wonderful. Uh, <laughs> Surprise guest. That system will never get put away, never get fully thrown away by me because of Super Mario Galaxy and Galaxy 2. I mean, those are just yeah. generational games for me. Yeah. I mean, maybe it's because I was, like, kind of at college age when that happened, but, like, the Wii made it cool to play video games at a party, and that was awesome. Like, it yeah, because that was even like, before, like, Rock Band and... Uh, a little bit, yeah, yeah. And then all kind of, it just, it was kind of like that little, like, you know, last straw, and then suddenly everyone's like, I love video games, they're cool, and everyone's, you know, got, you know, Smash Brothers out at, at parties and stuff, and it's, you know... Yeah. Did you not own a Nintendo 64? <laughs> we we were going to college crazy. parties back was, then, Alana. We're a little bit older. Oh. Like, dare you, millennial. <laughs> yeah. She was in diapers for the N64. I'm talking yep. about cool parties that you weren't invited to, Alana. <laughs> Damn it, Max! <laughs> you can't see it, but I made a cool gesture over here. <laughs> This is this weird Cold War, or it's like that old dating game where you don't know who you're like talking to on the yeah. other side of the wall. I'm gonna reveal at the end. Yeah. 
Uh, of course, since the Wii launched this year, that's also the year we got Twilight Princess. Yeah, uh, launched with the app. Yeah. Uh, now, Ryan, you're a you're you're a big Microsoft guy, Microsoft I've, fan. Yeah, covered it for many years. 2006 uh, was the year we got Gears of War. Oh, come on! <laughs> oh. I remember the first time I saw Gears of War running, I thought that is the most beautiful console game I've ever seen. It really was. I mean, it, there was uh, a Oblivion lot of and Ghost and Recon Advanced Warfighter before, and Fight Night Round 3 even, but this was sort of the, the big, you know, sort of breakthrough. Everybody's like, well, the next the HD era. Remember it was called the HD era back then? Yeah. It's officially here. Uh, multiplayer was simple but great. Uh, characters became more than just these lunkheads. They... They somehow had personalities. Really? And... <laughs> Come on, Max. I mean, his neck goes right into his head. It's just like... <laughs> well, you know. Max, <laughs> look how you're dressed. <laughs> the thrilling tale of two muscular you know, testicles the... making their way across it's... an epic mud puddle. It's this generation's Fred Flintstone and Barney Rubble. You know, just Fair no enough. Ne no That's neck. a good answer. They got to use their feet to make the car go. <laughs> That's right. That's right. There was that bad, I like the part bad where the, vehicle section. I like actually. the part where the chainsaw gun goes, it's a living. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Flintstones humor. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I absolutely adore Gears of War. I still love that first game. I have more hours in that online than anything else, and I've played MMOs. So it's a, it's a lot. And there was like a period of time where uh, I actually earned a small amount of money playing that on ranked leaderboards. Like I got so addicted to Gears Online, and I, I can't wait to have that again with Gears 4. I'm super yeah. excited for the, it. The, the Ultimate Edition reminded us that, that, that Gears 1 holds up, I think. Yeah. It also inspired a lot of other stuff, like Horde Mode, the cover system. Like, that inspired GTA 4's cover system. Like, that's huge to be able to inspire yeah. Grand Theft Auto. Like, that's crazy. Made Cliff Blazinski a household name. It's wise. <laughs> well, speaking of Grand Theft Auto, 10 years ago was the first Saints Row. Yeah. Wow. Which was very different than it is now. Start out as a straight up GTA clone, and now it's, now it's a superhero yep. game. Yeah, we're serious. <laughs> yeah, Saints Row 3 is the best Saints Row. Everybody agrees on this, I yeah. hope. Yeah. yeah. 3 was the best one. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, this, this game didn't have any cool sex bats, did it? That was the other one? I don't know. It was, like, it was pretty crazy. Like, from but, the, they were like unabashedly, uh, I mean, pretty uh, vulgar, like right out the bat. You yeah. Know? I don't know. I, I legitimately didn't play the series until 3. I yeah. played 3 and I was never a big fan, weirdly enough. I don't but know. It, you didn't like 3 either? No, honestly. It was one of the, it was one of the first good GTA clones. I mean, yeah. it, it, and, so that's, and the fact that it was on one, a next-gen console, it, you know, it was just perfect timing for that game. Well, they used to like, they like casted porn stars as voice actresses in the game. Yeah, they did. Was, it's weird seeing the THQ logo because THQ did so much big like marketing stuff for these games. Like they had so many weird marketing stunts, and yeah, like the porn star thing and everything else for Saints Row. The Arbiter was in it. That was cool. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I like. It's weird because I I I love the newer Saints Row games, but I like actively hated Saints Row when it came out. I was like, this looks like. This looks like the trapper keeper of a guy who calls me mean names in math class. Like, this, <laughs> like I don't like this one bit. You know, GTA has like a certain like they got a character who looks like Easy E. This just seems like kind of ham-fisted and just goofy. And then yeah. it got really ham-fisted and really goofy. And I was Max, didn't you get sent a dildo bat? Yep. Yep. <laughs> that happened. Yep. That was uh, a really weird. That was a weird birthday. They sent me. A, <laughs> oh, completely this, unrelated to Saints Row. Uh, <laughs> this very long package showed up at my at my door uh, from THQ when uh, the third was about to come out, and I was like, "That's a weird shaped game." <laughs> and yeah, that was a, was a, a large dildo. <laughs> so I mean, you could say I was like, you know, well, like paid off or sleeping around or some somewhere in between. <laughs> A game I'm pretty sure doesn't have any dildo bats in it is Okami. No, it totally does, actually. <laughs> it does? It does. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I can't correct you. It's version. an Easter egg. <laughs> uh, this, was, this game was really good, but uh, did you guys ever finish this game? Because it just went on forever. It was yeah. also pretty hard. I never did. Yeah, it got really hard. It was really long. That was terrible. I'm not going to say that again. Uh, <laughs> no, but it was incredible. This is, I, it remains, I call this my favorite 3D Zelda game. I Aww. think this is better than any of the 3D Zelda games. Uh, I think it's style. Better than Ocarina of Time. Better than Ocarina of Time. Yeah, that didn't have a cool wolf. Show me one cool wolf in Ocarina of Time. Yeah. Well, I can show you one in Twilight Princess. Don't, we're not talking about that. Uh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> um, yeah, There's I think only it's one style. Twilight Princess, and her name is Kristen Stewart. <laughs> <laughs> What? Took oh a my god, please leave. <laughs> took a minute. 
the weird thing about that is over here we can only hear certain things that the two of them are saying, yeah, and so yeah, I had to piece little. the joke together in my head. I was like, I liked it. We can't hear you either, so it's all good. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I absolutely love Okami, and Amaterasu is just like such a cool character, and the style of that game, the sound design of that game, is it's beautiful. It's so beautiful. And then they added Amaterasu to Marvel vs. Capcom. Mm -hmm. it's like, yes! Yeah, yeah. Well, good. that was cool. Uh, also, turning 10 this year, have you guys ever heard of, you ever heard of this show, Game Scoop? Woo! Yeah. Believe that, so, that's pretty crazy to me that I've been hosting this dumb show for 10 years hey, now. Hey, so hold on, like, Damon, I was just on a, a panel with Greg, and he was talking about, like, the first time that Game Scoop was on video. What mm. was it like when it first, like, started, started? Like, well, were we were in iGen's old office, and we had this podcast studio, and we all stood up around like standing <laughs> microphones and we we stood there and recorded the podcast and then someone from the video team listened to the whole thing live and was like adjusting the volume levels on the fly. Was there like someone who it was the greatest idea of all time that was like, what if we lower the mics and sit down? <laughs> I'm like, oh, oh. I'm picturing like, oh brother, where art thou? We're like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You gotta go in there and you talk into a can. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh, but thank you all for uh, listening to, watching the show, supporting it all these years. Uh, we are planning uh, an anniversary party for later on this year. Uh, so stay tuned for news about that. Is it gonna be an HD remaster? It's gonna be an HD remaster. Will you all stand up yep. to do the show? Yep. Oh. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. All right, 15 year anniversaries. This stuff is 15 years old now. How about the Game Boy Advance? Oh. Yeah. The best Game Boy. I Although would say the Game Boy one. Advance SP. SP. Well, I, yeah. had, I sent mine off and got the, the backlit screen modded Ooh, into it. That's yeah, you're, cool. you're both idiots. It's the Game Boy Micro. Well, <laughs> like, I'm sorry, but eat shit, you're wrong. <laughs> Game Boy Micro is one of the finest machines ever made. Right it's, up there with the tractor. <laughs> <laughs> is that what he said? <laughs> <laughs> this was like the of Game Boys, though, basically. Yeah. It was where, yeah. you know, there was the original, and was, this is where it really hit its, hit its peak, I think, hit its stride. Well, and it's almost literally the Super Nintendo of Game Boys because there are so many good ports on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mario 2 was like a, literally a launch game. And you can play all of the best Final Fantasy games on Game Boy Advance. Like, you, there are so many, it, it's such an interesting library because there are so many good games that were previous on other systems. Like, I, the, the core Game Boy Advance library is really good, but I feel like the things I remember the most are the ports, weirdly. Yeah, that's a, we, were, we just recently ranked uh, the top 25 GBA games, and we had this long meeting where we were like, do we include ports? Because if we do, the first three are probably going to be you know, Final Fantasy VI, Mario World, and Link to the Past, because those are yep. you know, three seminal classics. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, the library is super strong. And then original games, obviously, like Minish Cap, and everything best like that. Best Zelda, second best. Yeah. Yeah, Fire, Fire Emblem. Yeah, Emblem. yeah. Someone, else, someone else, uh, shouted out Advance Wars too. I thought someone oh, shouted yeah. out Uncharted. And I just want to say Uncharted was not on the Game Boy Advance. <laughs> <laughs> Would play though. Yeah. 2001 was a crazy year for Nintendo. They also launched the GameCube that year. I feel like the Game Boy Advance and the GameCube are almost opposites of one another because the Game Boy Advance did so well and went on for so long, and the GameCube is just sort of like this weird blip in what Nintendo a, history. What a weird looking game console. Look at, look at the Christmas controller. That year. I got the yep. black oh, GameCube yeah. with yeah. Luigi, Luigi's Mansion, which I super adored. And by the way, Super Mario Sunshine is criminally underrated. Mm -hmm. no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, this was also the last time Nintendo had interesting third-party support. This was, uh, yeah. you know, the well, promised well, Capcom 5. Eternal Darkness. There was, there was a lot of third-party su support on the Wii. Interesting third-party support. Yeah. <laughs> I know we had, what, uh, uh, Red, was it? Not Red Factor. What was that crappy launch game? Red Faction? No. What was it crappy Wii launch Red, game? Red, Red Steel. Steel. Red Steel, yeah. Oh, two of those. Game, yeah. yeah, but I mean, getting stuff like, uh, like Killer7 and Piano 3 and uh, Resident Evil 4 first. Like, Resident Evil 4 debuted on this dumb yeah. purple cube. That's incredible. <laughs> yeah. Geist? Yeah. yeah. It's German for ghost. Uh, not Metroid, because Metroid Prime is the most overrated oh, uh, Nintendo game of all time. <laughs> <laughs> They've turned on you, Marty. Let's are they tear saying, them apart. Are they saying boo you or boo words? <laughs> You got literally I think four they're saying claps. Boo per Metroid is the best you, Metroid <laughs> game. It is. Uh, but also, shout out to the handle on the back of it. <laughs> yeah, you could carry it around your, your yeah. bud's house. Which just looks yeah. so cool. On the plane with you. If you're trying to attract also, bullies, it's uh, a great, great prop. <laughs> Damon, the Wave Bird, the first yes. great oh, yeah. wireless yeah. Yeah. controller, because the, the only other wireless game pads we'd ever gotten for any system were just crappy third party things that yeah. were just awful. Yeah, that's true. So, with uh, the GameCube, we got. Pikmin. 
We got Animal Crossing. They were, Nintendo was still releasing uh, N64 games at that time. That year they released Conker's Bad Fur Day. <laughs> oh, that's so good. He's got Conker, he's got a sexy squirrel friend in there. <laughs> is that a rabbit? And that's is it? It. I don't know what she is. I, I don't think I don't squirrels think can rabbit. be sexy, Damon. <laughs> you don't think so? I don't know. It's the Jessica gonna, rabbit. Let's find out. Like Conker <laughs> Marty, you've obviously never seen Space Jam. <laughs> Yeah, this was a weird game because I almost forgot everything about it until last year when I was reviewing Rare Replay. Game upon release. Yeah. Well, it's so weird that the Conqueror, the character, is like still around in really weird ways. In they Project released, Spark? Yeah, the episodic <laughs> downloadable stuff in Project Spark, and then there was like a Conqueror Jr. or something that they were the talking HoloLens about. HoloLens. Yeah, yeah, for HoloLens. It's so yeah. weird. But he's like a marionette. Yeah. Like, could they weekend at Bernie's him anymore? <laughs> <laughs> uh, how about this? You guys ever play this game? It's uh, called Grand oh. Theft Auto 3. Uh, Grand Theft Auto 3 actually got me through my first ever breakup. Aww. Yeah. So it was like, I remember just being very sad and playing that game all the time, but I had so much fun playing that as a, I don't know, someone who should not have been allowed to play that game, the age that I was at. <laughs> also should not have been allowed to play like, it. What, what was I? <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was very young, and it was like, my, my parents were like, eh. Seems fine, and then I was like beating up hookers. And yeah. a game that made yeah. me buy a PlayStation 2 that was the killer app for me. Mm -hmm. I, it's still my favorite, even though I think like five and maybe one or two of the others are better GTA games. That, that's I, that's just has the most memories for yeah. me. I yeah. mean, I feel like it's the last time everything is a lame phrase, but it's like the last time maybe second to Mario 64 where like everything suddenly changed. Yeah, like yeah. this felt like it was such a dramatic shift in what a video game could be, and it's yeah. inspired so much since then. Yeah, it we turned Rockstar into Rockstar, too. Yeah, like totally. totally. And we haven't today. had that singular moment since then of like, oh, there's like a different era of gaming now, yeah. like because of a single title. I remember distinctly like those, those conversations in school of like, you can do this, yeah, like you can do this thing, and it's like that. I mean, you know, we had that with other games, but like the kind of like with GTA, it was like, really? You could do that? Yeah. yeah. You just you, sit. You sure can. I'd sit there doing nothing except listen to the radio. Just listen to the radio yeah. stations. Yeah, for sure. Ryan, you said you got a GameCube for Christmas. Sure did. This year. When did you get this guy? Funny story. <laughs> the original Xbox. Hilarious story is I uh, got my career started with official Xbox magazine, didn't buy an Xbox until they said, okay, we'd like to fly you out for an interview. So I said, <laughs> I guess I better get one of these things. So I bought that in Halo, like two months before the price dropped by a ton, but yeah, Halo yeah. was... <laughs> Halo was it. Yeah. What I mean, what the, the multiplayer, three-shot death pistol. When you mastered that, you could you wouldn't tell your friends. You just destroy them <laughs> without telling them why, and they'd wonder. <laughs> but uh, it's all about uh, CTF on Blood Gulch, uh, all vehicles on, and you have the gentleman's agreement: no blocking the teleporters with with the warthogs. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, that gave gave birth to you know System Link and and really console-friendly LAN parties is, yeah. is because of Halo. I'll also just like never forget the, the final mission of Halo Combat Evolved where you're in the Warthog and you're trying to like make it yes. to the end on the countdown and trying to do that on Legendary. Yeah. Oh my god, it's infuriating but so satisfying. Like, well, to get that Legendary ending too. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Well, the library. This like, is it. It was it's really the one annoying. where Master yeah. Chief's in a bikini, right? <laughs> in your version. We had it patched into the Scoville yeah. build. <laughs> Are there any uh, Final Fantasy X fans? Yep. <laughs> Zach, Zach, our video guy, hates this game. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to admit, this is the first Final Fantasy game that I missed, but I remember yep. like everyone that I knew that played games was playing this game at the time. Yeah, there were so many games right around this era that were just like, oh my god, my current console can do that sort of thing, like the visual leap from Final Fantasy IX, which I adored and which was super stylish, to this is just like, it's absolute night and day. The, the you know, the pre-rendered and real-time cutscenes in this, the full voice acting, um, you know, the story, the summons, uh, just the, the breadth of places that you ended up going, and yeah. the really the smart, this is sort of the last, uh, the way this handled like ATB to me was sort of the smartest modern way that a Final Fantasy game had handled it. And yeah, it feels the most like the core ones. It's because yeah. I'm playing it now, like I miss this, and so it's really weird playing it in retrospect now on Vita. Yeah, and its popularity spawned the first Final Fantasy spinoff, or first yep. fake Final yep. Fantasy sequel to the, with 10-2. Mm. Yeah. yeah. 
And one more 15-year... Uh, oh, yeah, and also at Blitzball. I heard someone whisper that. That wasn't yeah. good. That was bad. <laughs> we don't talk about good things. Also turning uh, 15 years old this year is this guy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> is that Altano? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan? He's 15? <laughs> Voice actor, the, Max Payne is played by, I got to the credits and it was like, the credits of J, uh, Max Payne, James McCaffrey. I'm like, that's weird. I do, there, do not yeah. encounter many other McCaffreys. Yeah. No relation as far as I know. Papa? I wish he was my dad. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is the first Bullet Time game, yeah? Yeah. Didn't they, they trademark it. that? They like trademark Bullet Time, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Rockstar actually trademarked Bullet Time so nobody else can do it. Which They're is totally funny because sequence. they just stole it from yeah. the Yeah, they didn't, they didn't even create it. Yeah, now it's like Quantum Break doesn't have Bullet Time. You're like, yeah. well, sorry. It's, Thanks, you know, it's, Rockstar. Because it's really funny because they just straight up stole it from the Matrix and the Matrix just straight up stole it from Wushu films. And so I'm like, oh, yeah. I guess that's fair. <laughs> so it's actually a projectile period. It's different. It's <laughs> <laughs> Don't say free. that. <laughs> Never say that again. <laughs> Christ. I'm just going to say, I'll put that out there. You made it gross. I was just, you know. <laughs> I feel like um, Max man. Payne was one of the first games I ever remember playing that had like a really distinct kind of dark character, like mm. all of his history and the fact that he was basically blatantly an alcoholic and a drug addict was something that I remember being really confronting, but it also gave him a lot of depth that wasn't really around in that time. I love the graphic novel cutscenes, and there was that one weird like nightmare sequence in the middle where he's like, it's, it's almost as if this is some kind of video game. Yeah. <laughs> All right, 20-year anniversaries. These oh, games... now I'm feeling old. Yeah. These games are old, almost old enough to drink and come to our meet and greet tonight. <laughs> <laughs> games like uh, Mario RPG. So I, I, uh, I had to explain to somebody who Boshi was today, and they thought I was joking, because uh, a Waluigi walked by, and I was like, there goes uh, Bluigi. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, Boshi, man. He's a... Alternative Yoshi. <laughs> this was a, a Square, I guess a Squaresoft joint. Yep. Yeah. And it's also like Paper Mario is it, super fun, really smart, but they've never quite gotten it yeah. right the way they did it with Mario them. and Luigi isn't quite the same either. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And to me, this paved the way for weird stuff like Kingdom Hearts, like these mashups that shouldn't have happened but did and that shouldn't have been good but were. Uh, the battle system in this is still amazing. Mm -hmm. The cast of supporting characters like Milo and Gino that we're probably never going to see again because everything's terrible is really sad. Yeah, during the most recent Nintendo Direct, I guess it was a few back now actually, but uh, they confirmed Gino as a costume in Smash Brothers, yeah. and not a character. And Marty and I were like so excited for one second, then immediately then we punched Rich in the eye. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, this game's still incredible, and yeah, yeah the boss is in this game. Just looking at that box makes me. It, I just had a flashback to. I, I have such fond memories of just even opening Super Nintendo cartridge boxes. Just yeah. to, like oh, the manual and then the yeah. pull out the cartridge so good. Also, also shout out to like the, the ESRB kids to adults. Like, <laughs> like what, what else is there? <laughs> <laughs> this is a game for babies. <laughs> also, this is a, I mean, you're going to get to it in a second, but this is one of those seminal examples of a game that came out pretty much at the end of a console generation, beginning yep. of the next one that's still incredible and shows yep. like why, you know, mastering a piece of hardware is so important for the end of a generation. Yeah. Speaking of that next console. That was a good segue, Damon. That was 20 years ago. <laughs> uh, I, lo I love this console. So much of my uh, college years were spent playing uh, Perfect Dark with my oh, friends. Yeah. On oh, I love Perfect Dark. Yeah. Perfect Dark is better than Goldeneye. Yes. True. True. <laughs> True uh, statements. <laughs> I think uh, the Nintendo 64 is still my favorite console. Um, yeah. it's, it's one that I still own. Every time that one of my games dies, which happens comparatively rarely to new consoles, I will rebuy it, even though now they can be like $300, and the game library is amazing. Like The stuff Rare made from the Nintendo 64, all of it you can yeah. still play, and it's still tons of fun if your controllers don't have that weird limp thing that happened. <laughs> oh yeah, that happened. That happened a lot, but yeah. uh, it's, it was a fantastic console that really like, I think is, is the reason that I really got into games as much as I did. Have you ever played Banjo Kazooie? Big fan. Yeah, it's a real good yeah. game. Yeah. It's an excellent game. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, of course, Mario 64 mm -hmm. uh, launched with this system, so yeah. Wow, that was just <laughs> yikes. <laughs> what, you, think, you don't think that was enough? No, that was absolutely not enough. We just mentioned how aside from GTA 3, that's probably the most influential game of our lifetime. Yeah. So what do you, I'm, I'm happy to spend as much time as you like on, on Mario 64. Oh, no, I, I like Banjo because it's better. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think the, the N64, like, I've never fallen out of love with a console so much. 
like, I don't mean to be like, you know, a downer or anything, but like, it started out like so cool and it was like totally mind blowing. And then like, you're like, wow, Conker's Bad Fur Day is $70. Like, why is Gex 64 so much? And it was like, also cartridges. Why is everyone else doing a different thing? And then I, you know, I got, I got kind of curious and I was like, this is a PlayStation thing over here. What a, what a miraculous machine. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm just putting that out there. All right. I'm Shadows of the Empire is fun. Whatever. Oh, Max. <laughs> Shadows of the Empire. You're wrong. So. Yeah, you're, you're actually wrong. Go play Banjo Kazooie. Go I, play I, I, well. I do. Oh, yeah, oh, Marty, you play it. Finished okay. it like two months ago. Uh, these guys are 20 years old. Oh man. God, those original ones still hold up so well. Like, they just put them on 3DS, and they, I played through Pokemon Yellow, and I'm so obsessed with it, and I went back and started Red. Because yeah. it's, like, it's crazy how well that... Like, they're super formulaic, and every Pokemon game since then has been the same thing. But, man, well, I guess, it's so I guess there's a reason why. Because yeah. like, they yeah. kind of nailed it with the first one. Yep. So. Oh, I mean, totally. and as RPGs, Pokemon games are incredible, because you can get as deep into them as you want to, or play them as lightly as you want to. And one of my favorite things about it is it would be so statistically unlikely that anyone would ever have the exact same team as you. You have to pick from types, you pick their weaknesses, you pick their HMs, and you pick their TMs, and then it's also all of the training that you do, and yeah. now we have breeding. Like Everything goes towards shaping your team of things that yep. stick with you throughout that whole journey in a way that like I think is pretty unparalleled. Yeah, it's nuts that it's both rock, scissors, paper, and chess at the same time. Yeah, absolutely. Also, I say rock, scissors, paper instead of rock, paper, scissors. Say, is that a Wisconsin Before thing? anyone calls me out on that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and call myself on it. <laughs> Uh, Alana, you were named after Charizard as well. Yeah, I was. <laughs> my name's Alana. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, no, I, I also have two Pokemon tattoos, so I'm a big fan. Pokemon was like was one of my like favorite games. I have like, Charizard I... and the Kanto gym badges. <laughs> what about that Thank Zubat that on the back of your neck? You got a you got a Zubat on the back of your neck, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like Christopher Nolan Zubat, Zubat, but still, you know. <laughs> Um, but no, like, I remember, like, going over to my friend's house, and he had a Nintendo Power subscription, and he wasn't, like, he got Pokemon, but he wasn't, like, crazy about it, but I was like, what are these strange animals? They're so cool! They're so interesting! They're, like, all these different animals! They're so great! And he, so he gave me, like, the, the, like, the Pokemon Power, like, tear-out Nintendo Power, like, mini-magazines, and I, like, read those, like, backwards and forwards, and drew, like, awful pictures of Eevee. <laughs> now I have a Pomeranian dog, which is, like, a real Eevee. It's awesome. <laughs> Uh, how about this game? Ooh. How about that box art? I know. Oh my goodness. That box art's great. That's, that is impressive. <laughs> that box art is gorgeous. Crazy box art. That was like before they knew what Resident Evil was. They didn't know how to, how to market this game yet. Uh, is he an account gone Evil horribly, horribly mad? They're projecting a Rorschach <laughs> painting over him, I think. Uh, yeah, this is a, started the whole survival horror thing. It was pretty clumsy, but then there was a director's cut that came out. One or two years later, uh, improved it greatly, I think. Was yeah. it one or two that had like the unlimited rocket launcher thing? I, I think all of them had, if you beat it in a certain yeah. time, yeah. you would get those kind of things. Yeah, three yeah, hours. Yeah, the first three one did hours. that as well? Yeah. I remember um, having tons of fun with that. Yeah, and this is just the Spencer Mansion the first time around. Like, you go back now and it seems silly. I mean, in remake, it seems incredible, but... It, it was remade silly. only last year, wasn't it? Uh, no, the remake. Yeah, the remake came out the again remake last year. Was yeah, which is very confusing. But like, I remember playing that originally, and it was terrifying. Like the first yeah. time the dogs jump through the windows, the dumb snake thing eats your leg, or anything like that. It's like that was I'd never seen and controlled anything like that in a video game. And like, yeah, looking back, the dialogue is just like impossibly bad. Yeah, and the voice some of the acting, greatest bad mm -hmm. voice acting games. Yeah, right. absolutely. And the the camera, like while while the background still looking nice, the camera is just absolutely crippling. Like the game still. I don't know. I still replay it every once in a while just because I want to remember what it was like to be scared when I was a kid like that. You're glutton for punishment? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> You're almost you have horrible eyesight, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Jerk. Uh, whatever, uh, whatever this thing is, this thing's 20 years old. <laughs> <laughs> I would say that is probably the best bandicoot in pop culture. <laughs> and so oh. many great games to this day. <laughs> oh. I mean, they made a lot of games on the original PlayStation. Yeah. yeah, I mean the first three were incredible, and yeah, this was the you know this is the first time most of us ever heard of Naughty Dog, um, and the fact that in the span of 20 years that developer went from here to The Last of Us and now to Uncharted 4, obviously is weird. I can't really think of another developer yeah. that's like tonally shift so hard over the course of you know its career. Like Rockstar was always well, I guess I don't know Rockstar and DMA. They did Space Station Silicon Valley, and now they're doing yeah. that. Yeah. 
I like that Universal Interactive Studios publisher. <laughs> uh, this young lady is 20 years old. Wow. Yeah, this is like the game that I got with my PlayStation. Uh, it was my, sort of my first foray into uh, CD gaming. Uh, spent a lot of time playing this in, in Symphony of the Night as well. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah. I played on PC. Uh, the standout memory from this game is, of course, the T Rex. Yeah. yeah. Also, this is one of those series that I, there's very few series that have ever started off so high, gotten so low, and then worked its way back again. Yeah. Like, I never thought yeah. something like the Tomb Raider reboot, Rise of the Tomb Raider, Lara Croft Go, like something like that could have happened yeah. back in the battle days of the just terrible, terrible games. Yeah. I also remember playing this with a Gravis gamepad on the PC because oh. dual thumbsticks weren't a thing yet. So it's like, well, good luck controlling that game. Yeah. I remember trying to play that on a, like on a PC with, with keyboard and mouse. Yeah. It wasn't great. No, it wasn't also a fun very time. Hard. <laughs> yeah, super I also hard. I also don't know if the computer was bad or if the game was just sort of this was kind of the thing. No, it and was I the feel game. Like <laughs> it might be the latter, but it was like you're very much like constantly in bullet time. Yeah, like you're kind of kind of floaty. <laughs> uh, the original Diablo. Oh my goodness. Speaking of PC gaming. Oh, fresh meat. God, <laughs> the butcher. Do you remember when like cutscenes were like a treat? When and Blizzard was like so far head and shoulders above everyone else in the world at them. I mean, they still kind of are. They still are. They're still. Very I don't know why they're paying a guy to make a Warcraft movie. They should just sit down and do it. But like, when awesome. it was like, oh, Blizzard's making a role-playing game, and then turned out to be an, an action RPG, and uh, th this this might have been a, a Marty. Uh, this might have been a game changer for me. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it was just it just the, the invented the. Click, 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 click genre. Yeah. Which I still <laughs> so, adore to this the day. The sound of Diablo. I was, I was a real youngster when this came out, but like, Ryan, was it scary when you played it? Well, I don't think so. Yeah, I wouldn't say it was really scary. I mean, when, when like the butcher came out at you for the first time, he was the first mini boss you encountered. It was kind of like, oh God. And then he would chase you I mean, around the dungeon. Just, that, that was a little scary. Just but, comparative to like, you know, to, to Warcraft. It was like, Warcraft is yeah. like kind of cute. You click on the sheep enough and they quote babe, you know, like this, like. <laughs> Like Diablo, you're like, oh, oh that's actually like scary guts. I just remember th there was a beta of this that you had to sign up for, and like not everybody got in, got in, and then they ended up delaying the game as would become a Blizzard thing. And then it came out like on weirdly like January 2nd or something. They like it just one of the have just you, barely out of the holiday. Have you seen that delay announcement? Like, have you read that recently? No. The, the delay announcement for Diablo was like the cutest thing because they're like, hello, Diablo fans, we appreciate your interest in our new game. <laughs> We are sad to tell you that we are not done with it yet, but we want it to be real good. And it's like, it's, it's like, before PR was it's invented. It's like typewritten, <laughs> like it's hand signed, like it's so weird. This is weirdly the only game ever my parents told me I wasn't allowed to play huh. uh, because I guess they had heard it was so scary, which also is really funny looking back. It's a different language for devil. <laughs> a different language. A different language. And as your mother, who's on the other side of Max, knows, you're not supposed yeah. to play devils. The end of this, by the way, where you just shove the soul stone into your own head. It's just like so good. <laughs> Spoiler uh, alert, 20 years. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This, this next game I included just for Andrew, the original Persona. Aww. Aww. Man, he's crying right now. Those are tears. It's so weird. You talk about games that have changed a lot. Like, the original Persona is nothing like what it is now. Like, I mean, it's, it's a spin-off of a spin-off, and so it's like a weird, harder Shin Megami Tensei game. Now there's all this dating, and there's all these high school kids. It's very different. There's a dog that's always on your desk, or a wolf. You have a lot of that dog. <laughs> all right, 25 years. Uh, we're, we're, this is why you brought me, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> these are the guys turning 25 years old this year. Guys like... Oh, oh my God. <laughs> I mean, Sonic? Sonic is the best Sonic. Sonic the if Hedgehog? you play that theme music right now, I will just instantly be transported back into a happier place. Just so uh, good. Yeah, no, the, the, this guy is the entire reason that Sega had any fighting chance yeah. uh, going up against Nintendo. The only reason we ever got a Saturn and a Dreamcast, uh, whatever the, the company is today, would, it would be... You left out Saturn, I noticed. No, I said Saturn. Oh, you did? Yeah. Okay, good. I'm not paying attention. Don't uh, mind me. Sega also You're left out Saturn. Saturn. <laughs> the world left out Saturn. Like, yeah, they were just being totally trounced by Nintendo. They needed uh, a home run and this. Well, nobody had a master system, yeah. so it's like yeah. when the Genesis well, Levi Buchanan around. is the only person to own a master system. All right. <laughs> Enough Sonic. I mean, I'll, I'll just say this. Like, I love that Sonic, like, he's such a, he's such a relic of the 90s, but I love that, like, Mario's, like, Oh, he looks like your dad. He's a plumber. That's the guy who like 
<laughs> cleans up poop. Like, like, that's sort of, all right, whatever. He does mushrooms. Yeah, just he's like sort Sonic of cool. looks just like a hedgehog. <laughs> and yeah. Sonic shows I'm up. Here and to he, clean he's your like, pipes. He's like, I got, I got sneakers on. I got an attitude. Like, look at his, look at his hand. He's got some sass. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> that's like the first emoji right there. Like, uh, uh. <laughs> Uh, 25 years ago, Street Fighter 2 showed up in arcades, and I, yes. I included a very special flyer for this game. These are the original flyers for Street Fighter 2 that wow. were sent out. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I think that's just that's a, a Wham! album cover. That's another game like, like GTA 3, where nobody really, you know, the, the, the originals weren't a thing. It yeah. wasn't until this Street one Fighter, that, the original Street Fighter was like yeah. a whatever game. So you know that Capcom USA knew Street Fighter 2 was coming, and they needed to let arcades know, so they just put this together, <laughs> having no idea what the game was going to be that, that they the were getting. That is the most 90s yeah. ad for anything I've ever seen. The print behind seen. the photo is the most 90s <laughs> The design. coming soon on the left rail there. Yeah, for sure. And then that guy, the very... <laughs> Sullen. <laughs> so at first I didn't realize he was wearing a shirt, and so I thought he was shirtless. Shirt, so I'm like, yeah. Who, who's this naked man? Yeah. <laughs> How come I need to play as him? What character is that? Is that like Ken and Ryu's kid? <laughs> <laughs> the, the day the Super NES version came out was one of the, like the greatest days of my childhood, bar none. Yeah, I've never. I'm not a fighting game guy at all, but. Probably this and Mortal Kombat are the only two games I remember playing so well, You had to get the Genesis version of Mortal Kombat. Oh, man. Because it had the blood. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. F off sweat. <laughs> you guys so ever very, play this game? Very wet men. <laughs> Just like they hit each other. <laughs> the best, Zelda. Sorry, Ocarina. It's this. It's the best one, yeah. It's Period. This. Yeah. I think uh, a lot of people agree with you that this is probably the best Zelda game ever made. Yeah. I mean, this is also arguably the best video game ever made. Mm -hmm. uh, it's something that holds up so impossibly well, something you could replay every year and discover something new. Uh, and this was that era where Nintendo could, first party Nintendo could sort of do no wrong. Like with, with stuff like Super Metroid and Mario World and this, it was just, it took what was super incredible and innovative on the NES and just perfected it. Like legitimately perfected. I think those three games are as good as those series have ever been. Yeah, yeah and that whole entire era is like, Every game is so good, mm -hmm. and it sets the bar for what all these franchises became. And like A Link to the Past, I think might be the first game I hundred percented because I just like could not stop playing it, and like everything was it was like legitimately like exploring. And like yeah. I I was a little because uh, a little young for NES, but like the first Zelda is still like awesome and still so like fascinating to go back to. But for me, like this is when I started loving Zelda, and this yeah. is like everything I think about when I think of that franchise. If only I could go back in time and tell my my younger self, it's not always gonna be this good. <laughs> it's not just home run after home run. <gasps> yeah, that sucks. I think this is the first game I beat myself. Like, mm. I love this game. It's so magic. Like, and also yeah. I, I, be, I beat Ganon with that butterfly net. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 25 years ago, the original Civilization wow. came out. Wow. Yeah. You got the Super NES box yeah. art <laughs> it's there, hard, too. Hey, I'm impressed. If you can find me a box so with art. With the Super NES mouse. I remember yeah. uh, oh. Mario Paint was what I got to have the mouse for, but yeah. boy, Civilization. Yeah. I actually didn't play it until Civilization 2. Who here played the original Civ? I can't even say that. Wow. No one played the original Civilization? There's, 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 there's literally one. There's literally one. back there. Okay, yes. He's the guy did. <laughs> All right, three. Okay, okay. so Sid three. Meier. <laughs> Sid Meier played it, yeah. One of these people is Sid Meier, so, you know. <laughs> Turning Sorry, Sid. 30 years old this year. Wow. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> the gold cartridge. Yeah, the original gold the cartridge. gold cartridge. Uh, oh. Yeah, I love how the box includes invaluable maps and strategic playing tips. <laughs> Am I nuts, or did the box have the 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 cutout with the gold cartridge shining through? Uh, I think yeah. so. This okay, is just a this image doesn't. All right. Yeah. It's just crazy to think about how much Zelda has influenced so many other games and other games that I love as well. Like I love the Dark Siders franchise. Yeah. I love those games, and they're basically just Zelda. It's like the way that that that. Other games that are now popular, like God of War as well, have just taken from Zelda mm -hmm. completely unashamedly because Zelda is so good. It's like, I'm just so glad that we have Zelda. I'm so glad it's a thing that exists. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy because it's like, it's fairy tale the video game. You know, I've been reading a lot of like, um, like making of books about Star Wars and like George Lucas was on this whole trip about like archetypes and fairy tales and the need for that kind of thing. And this Zelda is totally that for video games. Like it is... Yeah, you're like a little like a little elfy dude, and you gotta save the princess and fight monsters. Like it's totally straightforward. Like Mario is honestly really weird. 
Like, Mario is a plumber who fights turtles and eats mushrooms and shoots fireballs. Like, what? How did that take off? How was that a hit? I mean, it's because it was good, but why? <laughs> but, yeah, like, Zelda's just, like, it's so, it's so kind of old school and so, like, just... It's like an old painting, you know? Like You can yeah, explain that to somebody a million years ago. The soundtrack ago. sometimes just starts playing in my head, and it yeah. puts me in a good mood. And it feels so... Like, I think for me, this is the first game that taught me video games could have a scope that was more than just, like, a side-scrolling platformer. Like, it, it felt like you were exploring... Like, to me, as a little kid, this felt like an open-world game. It felt like the way I would yeah. drive through GTA V now, because it was, like, so crazy to me that you could explore an entire world. Uh, that same year, 30 years ago, we got the first Metroid. <laughs> Oh my god, Metroid's a girl, you guys! <laughs> yeah. I mean, to date, that's the best alien game we've gotten. That's true. Oh. Yeah. I mean, Super Metroid, but you know. Uh, also an incredible soundtrack to this game. Yeah. Really, really good year on the NES, because we got Castlevania. Ooh. The Belmont family. Awesome box art. Look at that. For this game. Uh, There's also the same year that we got the first Dragon Quest, called Dragon Warrior. Ooh. Not, the, not, I, not as great box art. God, I love how they're like, man, these white kids are never going to want to look at a Kira Toriyama's art. <laughs> <laughs> Your and, mystical quest. All right, yeah, there's one game celebrating its 35th anniversary this year. Anyone, anyone know what this is? Checkers. 35th anniversary? <laughs> oh. What is yeah. Danky Kang? Obviously, there's... Who's More the than just blonde one chick? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Who is that? We've got Mom? a kill screen coming up. Kill screen. No, yeah, I still love, I still love the art for this, uh, for this cabinet. I, just look, like, I love looking at that and just being like, yeah, this is going to turn into a multi-billion dollar industry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, sh sure. Mario's I mean, down there like, the oh, no, you don't. Excuse me, that's yeah. Jumpman. Like, this is where Mario was first introduced I don't think he was called Mario. It's called Jumpman. Jumpman, you're right. Yeah. So that, that's, that's insane. Like, that I don't know if, game, like, look at it. I don't know if that's <laughs> snot or sweat. And either way, like, it doesn't make sense. On the Genesis <laughs> version, it's blood. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the barrels also, are also like, bleeding. <laughs> what, was, what was Donkey Kong's end game with this? <laughs> like, what, like, what, I don't know. Like, I don't know he has. Like, He's, he has needs, Marty. Yeah, oh, Donkey Kong. <laughs> Uh, 40 years. Checkers? What? <laughs> uh, no, it's, uh, this, it's this, this game. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. You know, that box art is the best we've seen. He, period. I don't know why. So if you've played this game, you know there are no tennis players or tennis rackets in this game at all. I think that's Leroy Neiman. That's an amazing painting. Look at that. That's gorgeous. Yeah, it's really, really good. I'd put that in my house. I love how, like, back in, back in the day, like, I read a lot of old comics, and I love, like, they'll have ads for games, like, like really old, like, like, early 80s, and they'll be like, yeah, come into the Atari, this game, and they'll have, like, a cool-ass painting, and you're like, oh, this looks awesome, and then you look at the screenshots, and somebody just drew them. Like, somebody just <laughs> yeah. traced them on graph paper. They look like witness puzzles, like. All right, that's uh, the big uh, video game anniversaries that we're celebrating this year. I want to play a quick game uh, before we open up to questions. As many of you may know, we play uh, this game, Video Game 20 Questions, on uh, GameScoop. In live events, though, we find that... Thank you. In live events, we find video game Who Am I works really well. So I've actually picked a, a video game character for Marty to guess. Uh -oh. we're going to assign, I cheated. I know who it is. Uh, yeah, yeah. Just, I'm going to assign a character to Marty, and then he's going to ask us all yes or no questions. I'm going to put the character up on this monitor, and we're all going to help him. Uh, decide who he is. Can we get our monitor down here turned off? Wait. Is that possible? You know, wait, yeah. Can you see how? Yep. All you have to do is just not look over all here. Because we're going to get this monitor off. turned off. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Oh, yeah. All I have to do is take my glasses off, and we're good. <laughs> all right, so now when I put this character up here, no one blurted out. We're all going to help Marty figure out who he is. And Oh my God, is this an intervention? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, Marty. The, just, the, the image on screen is your liver, Marty. Yeah. <laughs> So just don't look over here. Okay? I won't give it way too much away. <laughs> All right, Marty is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I like no, that's cheap. Jeff that Bridges much. isn't a video game character. Uh, is it? Uh, no, so you say, am I? Am I a human? No. no. Oh, well, that's just difficult. <laughs> <laughs> am I an animal? No. no. Say am not, I, not am I an object? Hold on. Hold on. No. Do we need to talk about this? Not an animal? 
Maybe? I, Can we say maybe? Not a known animal. Yeah. Okay. okay, so am I a fictional animal? <laughs> sure. Maybe? <laughs> maybe? I guess. No. <laughs> Marty, we're, if, if this I, isn't like regular... This isn't regular 20 questions. This isn't something that makes sense. If it's I go on DeviantArt, character. are there pictures of me having sex with other people? Oh, yeah. oh, oh, my God. God. Yeah. yeah. Yep. <laughs> it doesn't narrow it down at all. Uh, do you, th- if I also go on DeviantArt and go to the next picture, do I have uh, what's generally considered male genitalia? I don't know. Maybe like half the time. Uh, you're asking tough questions. Half the time? What does that mean? It depends on the artist. <laughs> uh, uh, am I... Was I in a platformer? Yes. 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 <laughs> was it a 16-bit era platformer? No. Well, I mean, I mean, not originally. Yeah. 8-bit? Yeah. Yes. Uh, oh, jeez. Was, was I an NES character? Yes. An 8-bit. Animal. I don't have it. If I had it, I'd say it. Was I a Nintendo character? Yes. Well, I'm not Mario. Mario's got gen- I We all know what genitals Mario has. <laughs> also, Mario Wait, is Wait, am human. I the playable character? Yes. Yeah. F. <laughs> I, thought, I thought I tricked you. Uh, am I purple? No. What about blue? No. What about green? No. Those are the only colors I know. <laughs> uh, what about red? No. Uh, yellow. No. White. No. What on the box art? I'm white. Ooh, it's a Party, you suck at this. Uh, I'm not great at this. Just keep going with colors, man. You keep. keep no, they said on the box art I was white. <laughs> not on. What black? <laughs> nope. Is, is my from a game that's considered good? Yes. Jesus. It is. Am not I Jesus? getting angry now? <laughs> um. Okay, so this, it's, it's, it's an animal that's, a, that's white. <laughs> oh, no, well, it was white no. at some point. Green. You're losing Very a party. Green. Pink? Yes. yes. Am I Kirby? Yes. yes. Oh, dude. Kirby absolutely has a thong. <laughs> it depends on the artist. <laughs> Where? Unless he ate one first. Can you, can you point out Kirby's dong in, in this photo? <laughs> no, his mouth's covering it. Look how big his mouth is. Marty, also, what do you think? Is Kirby an animal? Uh, I mean, that's... Yeah. <laughs> is he an alien? Like, what is Kirby? What is canonically Kirby supposed to be? I don't know. What is Kirby's motivation aside from just, like, consuming? Gluttony? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's Kirby's a, just a sin. That's a oh, metaphor for America. <laughs> what does he do? Like, what does he do when he's, like, not doing that stuff? Like, does he have a house? Does that's he, what like, his deviant art stuff is all about. Oh. <laughs> uh... Who and Kirby? Dude, I would totally ship Jigglypuff, Jigglypuff and Kirby. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right, if anyone has any questions for us, uh, we have a few minutes left. You could, uh, I don't know, is there a, is there a, a microphone oh, right somewhere? Yeah. Oh, it's right here, sorry. Oh, Kirby's a, a dream puff. He is that's a cream a puff. That's a horrible thing to say. <laughs> that sounds like a sex thing. <laughs> hey, guys. Uh, you, state your name and your question. Whoa. <laughs> Chris from Boston. And... Um, I was wondering, Ryan, if you can give us a little uh, Duke Nukem action. Hail to the king, baby. <laughs> yeah, I can't, you can't, you can't. Yeah. What? It has to be organic. You're asking yeah. him that? Oh, okay. Really? A little bit. I'm a big bad boy, and I want to lay some dirty eggs down at the pond. I'm a nasty duck. <laughs> Legally, I cannot do Duke Nukem impressions because Gearbox will sue me, but, you know, I can do Duck Knock. Randy that's cool. Pitchford owns me, baby. I'm covered in feathers that- because I'm a bird. I don't know what the question is, was, question? so I'm just very That's confused. <laughs> Huge fan of uh, all you guys, just you know, following the podcast all the time, and really just appreciate everything you guys Thank are you. doing. And um, I don't know if you'd be interested in signing the Ori poster I got from Gareth Coker or not. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, but don't tell. We didn't make that game. We'll totally like. Can we just take? We'll take uh, time after the panel to uh, sign anything you want, take any photos with you guys. Absolutely. All right, well, so the best get, make sure we get some more questions. Though, it's like, do it, Duke Nukem impression. Thank you. According to that sign, we have five, we have five minutes. minutes. Yeah. 
Hi there, uh, MSU Hitman from St. Louis. Uh, sorry for a semi-serious question, but do you think this generation of consoles will reach its cap in sales quicker than the previous like two because so many games now require a broadband internet connection in places like the Midwest where I'm from or rural Europe or rural Australia don't have broadband available? I don't think so. I mean, the, the ultimate driving factor for console sales is always the price. It's always. So they'll get down to 199 in three years from now, and they'll move many, many more consoles. So I don't think we're, I think there's plenty of, of life left sales-wise in the generation. Also, also it's totally worth so noting there's, there's always going to be, like, kind of market after infrastructure increases. Like, Sony discontinued the PS2 in, like, 2011 or something like that. 360 so. just got discontinued this, this week. Yeah. yeah, and I also think this, the definition of this generation is going to be very strange, and we don't even know what it's going to be with a PlayStation Neo coming out this year, in theory, yeah. and whatever Microsoft does with the Xbox One. Like, and the NX. Like and the NX. Like, I don't know what this generation is. Like, I don't know five years from now if we are getting a full-fledged new generation or if this is just incremental updates to what we have. So, um, yeah, I don't know. To me, it's just super interesting. It's so, I mean, it's twice as fast as I expected these consoles to sell. Like, I think what Xbox is at now is what in my wildest, most optimistic expectations, I would have thought PS4 was at. So the fact that there are almost 40 million PlayStation 4s out there already is really crazy. Uh, that's where I would have... Like, I mean, people were talking about the, the death of console gaming, and now between the two of them, there are 65 million consoles out there, not even counting Wii U. Yeah, that's crazy. All right, so, you know, add another 5 million. <laughs> <laughs> add another 1 million. Hi, guys. My Hello. name is Albert. Um, since we're on a nostalgic road, I was looking through my phone, and I remembered... My first podcast ever was GameScoop. Ooh. This was back in September, I'm, if I'm correct, this is right, September 27, 2009. It was the Tokyo Game Show, 09. Oh, nice. Wow. And it was uh, part three, and the only thing that I can recollect that I kept on my phone, for reasons, was something called the Dirty 30. Yeah, so, <laughs> does anyone else here know what the Dirty 30 is? <laughs> you are my old school listeners, I love you. At the hotel that we stay at uh, for Tokyo Game Show, uh, you can watch 30 seconds of free pornography <laughs> before the screen uh, fuzzes out and they ask you to pay for it. So we would start watching in one person's room for 30 seconds and then we'd run to the next person's room. Wow. So we got in a good like, few minutes of porn for free. So if we're, if we're doing this, I would, I would like to, to piggyback on that. Yeah. Like, I, I heard that, that rumor Phrasing. of like... Of, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, piggy tailing. Uh, that, that rumor that, like, in, yeah, man, in Germany after dark, like, they just show, like, porn on the TV. Like, that sounds like something a sixth grader would say. That's nonsense. And I went to Germany for Gamescom last year for the yeah. first time, and I was in the, my hotel room, and I was like, watching TV, and I was like, this is, this is not true at all. This is not one bit. 130 strikes. <laughs> <laughs> like, six channels. Hi there. I'm Elijah from Pennsylvania, and... If we really think about it, with the Japanese release, it has been five years since my favorite console of all time, the PlayStation Vita. Mm. Damn. Do you have any fond mo memories with the console? Of that Sony console? Doesn't. No. Of this one. Hey. Yeah. The, the Vita? Yeah, I yeah. count Xbox. I mean, I, uh, most of us have Vitas and love yep. our Vitas, but I think that means we're just in a vocal minority. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Like, I play, I love Vita, I agree. I, I would rather play almost everything on Vita. Like, I wish uh, Persona 5 was coming to Vita. I wish uh, that I'm Setsuna, which was on Vita in Japan. I wish I was coming here. Uh, I like playing longer games portable, and I think Vita is probably my favorite Sony handheld. Like, I definitely like it more than PSP. Hmm. I've missed bus stops before for, like, you know, stupid reasons, but, like, I've never missed two bus stops for anything except for Hotline Miami. Like, I looked up, and I was like, Oh crap! Like I am, I am in the wrong place. <laughs> so you know, we literally have ten seconds left. We'll do one more question, quick. Um, so obviously you saw that Nintendo games got the most hype from everyone. Do you mm. think in fifteen years we'll be like still that excited about Nintendo and kind of reinvigorate everything that we love about them? We've had a lot of conversations about this kind of thing. Actually, is like. Is Nintendo running off of nostalgia at this point? Like, do kids these days care about Mario, or do they care about Skylanders? It's kind of hard Minecraft. to say. Uh, I, I think that I will always love Nintendo, and I, you know, I'm still waiting for uh, Zelda Wii U. So maybe one day that will happen. Um, but I mean, it's hard to say. I feel like, no, in 20 years, we'll be nostalgic for, I don't know, 
Crash Bandicoot. Nathan Bloodborne. <laughs> Bloodborne, yeah. Nathan sure. Drake. I'm always going to love Nintendo. Yep. Same. Same. Thank yeah. you. I Guys, think, I, think they'll right. make, I think they'll be making games for other platforms if NX bombs. I think that NX would be is yeah. kind of their last. Yeah. Their last you know job. what? I want NX to kick ass so I, much. I, do too. I, do too. I want yeah. NX to come yeah. back and just be like, hey, here's all your stuff, and it looks gorgeous, and it's, it's yeah. all the things you ever wanted. So. Guys, thank you so much for coming out today, for reading all this stuff, watching our videos, listening to our podcast. We love you guys. 